Hello fans of Moshpit Passion, my name is Kayo. Today I'm here at the Rock Hard Festival in Gelsenkirchen and it is, it is extremely hot. And hot is a good point for the band Possessed. On the left side is Jeff, the one and only of Possessed and we'll do an interview about their new record. So Jeff, you are on tour, it's your fourth venue yeah, date. Uh, so how's the tour so far? Uh, so far it's been really good, I mean we're just ca catching our stride. Uh, we got some really, really exciting uh, first shows, playing the new songs for the very first time in London, and then uh, the two uh, consecutive dates in the Netherlands. And yeah. So this, this will be. Hopefully, we'll hit our stride and hit our peak <laughs> momentum on this one. So we're looking forward to it. Nice. A couple weeks ago, your new record came out, and I saw everybody on Facebook and the metal groups check out this record it's very good and uh, no joke I was on the toilet on the first day ah. and people were talking oh, which band will you see ah possessed and somebody possessed no they are uh, 30 years old that the records oh no I don't know and he's stop check out the new record ah. it's amazing but um, how is you feeling about the record and the feedback of the fans especially did you ever expect such a good feedback from the from the fans well you know you always hope but you know I think with any death metal album, just like on my first album, you never really know until you know, mm. you know. So, you know, you, you prepare for the uh, worst and you hope for the best. And but the feedback has been just really, really positive, and uh, you know, it, it feels really good. You know, yeah. it feels good to get some more of my stuff out there on vinyl. You know. Yeah. Nice. Um, I want to talk about your new music video. It's the first one in over 30 years, I guess. It's Graven, the song. So how was it to bring the music on a different layer? Well, it was exciting. I mean, I was blessed and lucky to have my good friend, my very dear friend, Peter Stormer, mm -hmm. at, uh, on there. And uh, he came to work and he's, you know, he's always fun. And, and, and it's just, it was exciting. We went out to Hollywood and we shot, you know, at a film studio and mm -hmm. it was really cool. And then we, we, we did the principal in, in Hollywood and we, They did the, uh, the, the, with all the actors out in uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So we got some of the, the, the people from Walking Dead out mm -hmm. there. And we got, um, oh my God, Tom, oh, I forget his name, but the main actor that plays mm -hmm. the father, he, he's in the new Hulu, uh, he plays Charles Manson. Yeah. You know, and so we, we got some really good people and a lot of great um, uh, part actors and, you know, one beautiful girl and, you know, just really beautiful killer people and exciting to work with and mm. phenomenal talents and it was just fun it was yeah. really fun could you maybe imagine to do a whole film and which is using your music like like a horror slasher movie or something like that i would love to do that well you know uh we'll see what where publishing wants to go with that and mm. uh you know there's people out scouting that now and yeah. uh we're, we're looking forward to many many exciting things so yeah so um, you've been around since your reunion, but why does it take so long to record a new album? Well, it didn't take long at all, actually. Uh, we uh, we wanted to tour with the uh, the the real uh, possessed lineup for you know we we actually ended up touring three times longer than the first round. So yeah. these guys are wearing the possessed skin. It's very much a piece of their soul now, and we wanted I wanted to make sure everybody was nailed in so that we mm. had our sound and our vibe right, mm. and then. Uh, And then uh, we were tentative about writing a new album, mm -hmm. and uh, you know because you know Seven Churches, without trying to flatter myself, was kind of an iconic mm -hmm. culty album, and so to follow that up, we I, I really wanted to take my time and do that right. Yeah. So we we tried out by just having a couple of singles and trying them out and touring them around. And that seemed to fly really well, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, then we did a demo. We essentially recorded the the the, the album mm -hmm. uh, on demo format. And uh, we shopped it around, and mm -hmm. we immediately got several offers, and the the best of which being a nuclear blast, of course. Yeah. And uh, so, really, the lion's share of the uh, writing was done when we got signed. It was just a matter of uh, spending the time in a uh, in yeah. the studio and doing it. So cool. Well, it wasn't that long though. Yeah. It was pretty quick. It's yeah. interesting. Um, when it comes to the whole lineup changes over the years, uh, maybe you can introduce us the new guys who's doing what, yeah. and where did you meet them? Well, I mean, I've been with Emilio since 2006, mm. and that's when I, I started out with the, the band Sadistic Intent backing me, and uh, we split amicably, but the drummer was too good to let go, so mm. I, I nabbed him up, and then we started our, essentially started our core search for, for the, the, the new Possessed, the real Possessed, mm. and, and uh, we uh, were lucky enough to, to get um, Danielle Gonzalez, who's just a phenomenal talent, phenomenal. 
And uh, he used to see this kid sitting in his room that was, you know, I know he won't say this, but he was in some other band I had never heard of. And other than that, you know, I met him through his girlfriend on Facebook. Yeah. And she was like, uh, try out my uh, boyfriend. I was like, ah, yeah, I heard this before. Mm. And uh, then he came down, he had uh, like 18 songs perfectly down. And from the very first note he hit, Daniel was the best guitarist I've ever played yeah. with. And so we were lucky. Uh, then uh, we nabbed up uh, Robert Cardenas as a bass player, oh. who was kind of angry around the fringes. We had uh, we had Tony Campos from uh, Static Six. X and Soulfly, mm. and uh, he went out with Soulfly, so we needed a, a, a strong bass player. Mm. And Bobby fit the mark perfectly, and uh, you know I got really lucky. I kind of stumbled into that one, and that was kind of through persistence yep. uh, for him hanging around us. Yep. And then uh, and then uh, with Claudius Kramer. What I did was, um, we went through a couple lineup changes yeah. there. You know, people like Mike Party, he wanted to spend more time with his young daughter, yeah. which is understandable. And uh, Kelly, you know, he, he wanted to, he had some private stuff that he had mm -hmm. to deal with. And, and he's in the I Am Morbid now, which yeah. worked out really good for him. Oh. So then we, uh, I put out a, a social media call to like, uh, like to more than 30,000 people on social media. I said, who's the best guitarist you know that would fit possessed? And over 100 people said Claudius Kramer. And so cool. I guess I'd met him back in the 80s, but I don't remember. Yeah. And he came out and just nailed it, nailed yeah. the auditions, and we were set. You That's know? right, man. Yeah. Um, explain us a little bit, how was it in the rehearsal studio when it comes to developing the new songs? Are you a band who's rehearsing and trying to figure out several, several things, or is it like you're using modern technology, sending stuff via email, the demos, etc., and working then on tour or something? Well, well, the, well with the songs I wrote, um, uh, you know, I, I wrote probably half the music and, and mm. all the lyrics, but what I would do is I would essentially take my guitar and play it through the audio mic of my laptop, and I'd put together a package of seven to 12 mm. you know, core riffs, yeah. then I'd email them to Dan, Dan would uh, slap them with a drum machine on Pro Tools and do this rhythms and solos. Yeah. And then he would uh, email them to Bobby, who would slap on his bass with the software. Then to Claudius. Mm. And, uh, oh, before that, he'd go to Emilio's, we'd mm. mic up the drums, replace the electronic drums. Yeah. Then uh, we'd send it to Claudius to do his solos. And then lastly, we'd go to my basement, set up an audio <laughs> mic and a windscreen, and I'd just yell down in my basement. Mm. So that's how we set up. Uh, then we used those demonstrative tracks mm. as uh, the the foundational components of the album. Mm. So we essentially re-record over those as scratch mm. the rhythm and and uh, you know re-record the drum. We just replace them piece by piece, and we actually use some of the um, triggers to, to to vocals and you know the double up vocals. So so the demo actually became integral into the album. So yeah. Um, I want to talk about the songs because what I really like is you're using metaphors for your topics like the devil, hell, evil and I want to talk about three songs. The first is the first single. There's a new... No, sorry, it was... Is, um, no More Room in Hell? No Room in Hell, yeah. No Ro More Room in Hell, yeah. No More Room in Hell. And can you explain us what's the meaning behind? Well, you know, I've always been a fan of horror movies mm. and uh, It's from the 78 Dawn of the Dead when you said, when there's no more room in hell. Yeah. You know, and I thought, like, well, that's really great. You know, it's like, a, but, and, uh, you know, uh, and I've always, you know, like, I don't want to get too heavy because it could be a light song. It could be heavy wherever you want to take it. Mm. But, you know, as, you know, according to the Bible, you know, Satan's walking to and fro on the earth and he's never actually been to hell. Yeah. And so I kind of, like, just kind of ran with that in a kind of a devilish way and kind of made it, you know, mm. heavy and fun and, <laughs> you know, it, uh, that was kind of our, yeah. our 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 fun song, you know. But it's but it's, you know it's still heavy. You know, Will so. you uh, play the song also today live? Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna start the set with that one. So. That's nice. I also think it's a straight kick in the face. Yeah. And also, it was your comeback track for the new record. Everybody was freaking out on the internet. Uh, yeah. And also on your uh, new single, Korean single, Graven. Yeah. And it's interesting uh, to read the lyrics, but also what is the meaning behind? That was right now worship Graven images. Well. So. Uh, the video is uh, essentially, you know, I wrote the treatment for it, and the treatment started out to be a big epic thing, but they said that would be more of a movie than a video, so mm. they snipped it down, but essentially what, what church would look like, what Sunday Mass would look like, mm. if the God was no longer existent, you know, it was just Satan, yeah. and so everybody goes to church, and it's essentially, you know, a devil church. Yeah, you know, so. nice. And the last song, it's Demon. 
yeah. It's of course, I guess, the big mighty Lucifer. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, uh, but, you know, I was. Uh, it's weird because, um, yeah, that's one of the ones I wrote music to mm -hmm. as well, and uh, I, uh, I was. Uh, we were looking at these sigils for the album cover, and Payment was one of them, and I started. Uh, like researching these like kind of archaic cults where they they use the archangels as guardians to summon powerful demons and gain power mm. and wisdom and knowledge and stuff like that and uh my uh my mother actually came back from the flea market yeah and she goes oh look at this cute little statue i have yeah. and it was a payment it was a, a bird a dove with a gold crown on it yeah and i was like Fuck. <laughs> what's like, that it's yeah. crazy so it's a really coincidental so mm. i may have gone too far <laughs> Crazy man, nice. So yeah, my last question is, and I guess it's a big topic because you're the godfathers of death metal, and uh, you invented also the term on the Seven Searches record. And from your point of view over the years, um, does it make you proud to see like the Florida death metal scene and the European death metal scene? So when you were not so active and you see this from the um, different points, so how did you feel? That's exciting. I think that that currently death metal, because of so many uh, exciting bands, both new and old, I think it, it's equivalent to the the golden age of jazz. I mean, mm. it's it's the one of the, if not the most exciting genre in music today, mm. because it's you know to the trained ear, it's going in so many different directions and so many new flourishes mm. and creations from tech death metal to uh, to uh, you know the gothic or the the, the Viking or the uh, or the um, uh, there's just so many different kinds of death yeah. metal now and there's so much to pull for uh, 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 on resources and it's just really exciting it's there's a lot of new shit under the sun happening yeah. you know nice man mm -hmm. so yeah thank you very much for the interview there's one last question left and it's always a story which our interviewer um, is telling and our magazine is called Mosh Pit Passion okay. and do you have a Mosh Pit um, story to tell where you were on stage and see the crowd is completely going wild and but something you see something like somebody I don't know the show was completely over and somebody left his uh, pants or something like that or uh. somebody was flying around something something like that well we used to have a roadie and a really dear friend of ours uh, named Toby Rage yeah and uh, we were playing with Exodus one time and Toby was known for diving off the highest parts of uh, like he went off the speaker stacks at Iron Maiden and did a yeah. triple flip and that was like you know like like almost as high as this bridge you know what I mean yeah it, it just crushed people but Toby was extremely oh. rare and crazy always breaking bones but he, when uh, when uh, Exodus was playing Toby literally ran through the fucking mosh pit with two meat hooks mm. and it was like everybody was scattered he was like ah, just <laughs> flying around and doing crazy things and it was fun yeah so damn man that's that crazy was back at Ruthie's end yeah <laughs> So yeah, um, thank you very much for thank your time, for the interview. Wish you all the best for all the guys out there. Check the new record of Possessed is very good. Check also out uh, Mosh Pet Passion. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook. Follow also Possessed. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Mosh Pet Passion. Thank you, man. Thank you. Freunde, ich hoffe euch hat das Interview gefallen. Damit ihr keine Videos verpasst, abonniert unseren Channel. Auf unserem Kanal findet ihr noch weitere interessante Interviews mit namhaften Bands. Schaut euch auch auf unserer Facebook-Seite herum, wo wir exklusiven Content wie interessante Beiträge, Konzertfotos oder Videos uploaden. Auf unserer Webseite www.moshpitpassion.de findet ihr CD-Reviews, Konzertfotos, Konzertberichte, Interviews und viele, vieles mehr. 